Hello, welcome. My name is Emma and today I'm going to talk to you all about sewing machines. Usually on my channel I talk about mainly hand sewing, but I had a few requests and interest in the sewing machines that I've got, so I thought I'd make a video sharing all about those. I have two different sewing machines, one that is computerised and one that is purely mechanical. So I'm going to talk about the differences between those and why I've got two and talk about the particular models that I have. So I hope that all of that information will be really interesting if maybe you're thinking about buying a sewing machine either for the first time or upgrading or changing or perhaps you're just like me and really just love watching any videos to do with anything to do with sewing. Whichever it is, I hope you enjoy this video. So before I show you the Juki machine, which is my recent purchase, this is the sewing machine that I've had for about 10 years, maybe a bit longer. It's a Faf Ambition 1.0 and I love this machine. It's computerised so it has buttons for needle up and down and stitch width, start and stop. You can control the speed, there is a button for tying off and there are so many different decorative stitches which is one of the things that drew me to this machine in the first place. There are lovely flowers and leaves and there's an alphabet too. You can't actually buy this exact model brand new anymore, they don't make this exact model but they do make similar ones and this machine has a special place in my heart because it's the machine I bought with my first pay packet from my first full teaching job. Now you can see I've changed the throat plate to a straight stitch throat plate. It comes with a throat plate for the wider stitches but I changed it to this with the tiny hole in the middle because when, once I started using fine fabrics like Liberty Lawn I found that they were getting dragged into the bigger hole so swapping it for a straight stitch plate really helped with this. There are really good storage compartments in this part of the machine as well for your bobbins and other bits and bobs. It's also a drop-in bobbin which is really useful, you can see when it's getting a bit low and it has this free arm section so if you need to sew cuffs and things like that the free arm is perfect for that, you really do need that for lots of garment sewing. This is a relatively straightforward machine to learn how to use. Even though computerised machines can seem quite complicated and there are certainly more complicated ones on the market, this one is quite straightforward and everything is explained really nicely on the screen. So it really is a joy to use. This machine sews beautifully. I also have a Faf Overlocker which is a really great machine too. So I definitely recommend Faf as a brand. As you can see it's doing the locking stitch there to tie off the end of the seam and it doesn't have an automatic thread cutter on this machine. You have to do it yourself. Which it's nice to have an automatic thread cutter especially if you're doing patchwork and lots and lots of seams and I'll talk about that when I go on to talk about the Juki. This machine came with lots of different presser feet but not a walking foot because it has a built-in dual feed foot that you can see here at the back and you have to raise your presser foot and just click the dual feed foot into place and I tend to use this all the time regardless of what I'm sewing even if I'm just sewing cotton layers together but the idea of the dual feed is that it helps to guide multiple layers and it helps with slippery fabrics and I do find that it works really well for slippery fabrics but I was having some problems with quilting and I am quite aware that it won't just be to do with the sewing machine that there were probably lots of things that I was doing wrong which is why I was struggling with quilting itself and that's what led me to eventually want to buy another sewing machine. So this is my new machine, the Juki TL2200 QVP Mini and it is a beautiful machine. It's completely different to the Faf Ambition because this is a purely mechanical machine which only does a straight stitch. Nothing else, 
just a beautiful straight stitch. It's a solid machine, it's metal from the outside in and it's really heavy so it's not portable really. You couldn't take it to classes and things like that. So because the other machine is lighter and because the other machine does different stitches that's why I've decided to keep the other machine and have two. But this machine is really great for quilting. It has a really large throat space. I love that it has the thread guide and you can put a big cone of thread on there and all the tension dials are on the outside and they're really easy to use. Threading it is really simple and straightforward and it just has a reverse lever, a needle up and down button, an automatic thread cutter if you press that scissors button there and then you can alter the speed and you can alter your stitch length as well. So really straightforward and I love the extension table that it comes with. That's really great for when you're working with larger pieces of fabric. For example, curtains or quilts, things like that. So let's take a look at the feet and accessories that this machine comes with. Unfortunately it doesn't come with the cute boxes, but it does come with this really lovely walking foot. It feels substantial, feels heavy, and this was one of the main reasons why I wanted this machine. I really wanted to have a walking foot. I felt like that might help to improve some of the issues I was having when quilting. Not all of them, I know most of them are down to user error and not machines. There were just some guides that you can see I haven't used yet. It comes with some metal bobbins, but I did purchase some additional metal bobbins as well because you can never have too many bobbins. And it also comes with some needles. It uses the organ needles in the size HAX1. I think you can buy those needles made by other brands as well. And this is a foot that compensates for different levels in your sewing. It's not one that I've used at all, actually. But the feet are really substantial, heavy metal, and they screw on with a screw. They're not clip-on feet. This is another foot that I haven't used at all, and this one is the quarter-inch foot with a guide. But I found that the guide was useful, but it was causing the edge of my fabric to fray, because it is... A sharp piece of metal. It's not sharp that it would rip it but it does cause some fraying to happen so I've switched to just using the simple quarter inch foot without a guide and that one is the standard presser foot that it comes with. The feet really do feel nice and feel of a really high quality. This one is the zipper foot. I haven't used that yet either. I've only had the machine for about six months. So they're the main things that it comes with, but it also comes with some excellent free motion quilting feet. Again, I haven't used them yet, that's why they're still in their packets. But it comes with this round one, and it has a spring attached to it. Here is the other free motion quilting foot another circular one so it comes with two circular ones the larger one is a quarter inch and the smaller one is one fifth and it also comes with a third free motion quilting foot and this is the open toe quilting foot so it's really great that it comes with so many options I haven't tried any of them yet I have tried the walking foot and that's all. It comes with a screwdriver for taking the feet on and off and it also comes with a little bit of oil. This machine needs to be oiled regularly. My faff machine never needed oiling, it was a self lubricating machine. But this one you need to oil it before you use it each time. The extension table is really great 
It has adjustable feet and a place to store the knee lifter. I'd never used a knee lifter before and I was really interested in giving it a go and I've tried it out but it, to me it's a little bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy but I think when it comes to quilting my big quilt I'm going to find the knee lifter really useful. I'm definitely going to try it out again. So this is where the bobbin is stored in the bobbin case. So it is just like a traditional mechanical machine in that sense that it's kept in there. And I find it really easy to thread. I don't have any problem with it. The only thing is that you just don't know when the bobbin is due to run out. So it does happen that you're in the middle of stitching and then suddenly you realise it's not stitching anymore and that's because your thread's run out. But I like that the table has this little trap door in it so that you can access the bobbin without having to remove the whole table. So I find that really helpful. I really love the throat space on this machine. It's larger than the faff, but something that's really interesting about it is that it's tall as well. So if you do have to roll and squish up a quilt, you've also got extra height in there. So that makes all the difference. It's not just about the width, it's the height too. This is the foot pedal. And obviously you press down at the front to make the machine sew, but if you press back on the pedal, that actually activates the automatic thread cutter and that's really handy too. So I've rolled up quite a few layers of quilting cotton, there's possibly eight or ten layers there, might even be a little bit more, I can't remember now, but just to show you how beautifully it stitches through that and I'm not going at full speed or anything like that and I'm doing it one handed and holding a camera in the other hand so I went a bit wonky but I can just press the automatic thread cutter and remove it and show you how lovely the stitches are and as you can see it's a great great stitch. I love the simplicity of this machine. I love that it just does a straight stitch, but it does it really well. It feels really solid, it's strong and sturdy. And I love that you just do a reverse at the beginning and end and then press the cutter and that's it, your seam is done. So it does actually speed me up a little bit compared to using the other machine, especially for patchwork. One thing to be aware of with this machine is that it isn't a quiet machine. It's not super, super loud, but it's definitely noisier than my computerised machines. So you can see it sewed through the thick layers of cotton and also the fine layers of Liberty Lawn and here it has some hexiform in there as well and I'm not actually using the walking foot but it sewed through these layers really really well too. I'd say probably the only sort of downside to the Juki machine is actually the sewing machine cover that it comes with which I'll just show you it's this. It's made out of this sort of plastic thin plastic stuff and does have card on this side but I've not really used this very much and it did manage to get a little scratch and a scrape and a hole in it already and it's a, it's a shame really the the faff machine actually comes with a really nice hard plastic cover dust cover um and yeah and I think this this is a bit it's not it's not the best but um I do have plans to make a beautiful English paper piece dust cover for the Juki and I'm going to use this as the pattern for it so I'm going to take it apart 
and use that as a template to make a new cover. I may even be able to reuse the card that's inside it to give it even more structure so it won't be floppy and sort of fold in on itself. So it won't be wasted and it'll be put to better use. And of course, when I get around to doing that, I'll show you here on this channel. So I've only had the Juki machine for six or seven months. I bought it in December 2020 and I bought it from the same sewing machine dealer that I'd bought my faff from and my faff overlocker. But I didn't go and try it out first and if you can, I do really recommend going to a sewing machine shop and testing different machines to find the machine that feels right for you. With my faff, uh, I did go and test it out and I knew straight away that that was the right thing to buy. With the Juki, I hadn't tried it. I hadn't sewn on a mechanical machine for many years, so I did take a bit of a gamble. We were in the middle of the pandemic. It was locked down. It wasn't really possible for me to go and try it out. Of course, I could have just waited and bought it at a later date, but to be honest, I was wondering how long is this going to go on for and various things. And I took the gamble and it paid off because I am so happy with this machine. That straight stitch is just absolutely beautiful. And it goes through the layers of fabric so well. And I love the scissors function. You really do save a lot of thread by using that function. On the other sewing machine, I am tying it off with the tie off button and then pulling it out and snipping the threads. And you inevitably get thread tails that you need to cut off from the other end. And you do get some thread wastage that way. But with this machine, I it snips the threads and then you just start the next piece and they start short. So you really do save thread in the long run. So I think that's really great. And I'm excited to use it to level up my sewing machine, my machine sewing skills. I love all the feet that it comes with and I can't wait to start to dabble in free motion quilting and things like that. But for now I'm concentrating on using the walking foot and trying to perfect stitching in the ditch because that's definitely not my strong point. So little by little I know that this machine is going to be it's, it's going to grow with me. I won't need to ever buy another sewing machine, that's for sure. Having these two machines, I've got everything that I would ever need now and I'm really grateful for that. So if you're thinking of either buying a Juki or a Faf, then I definitely recommend both brands and I think if you're a quilter, particularly the Juki is excellent for that. But always remember that it is straight stitch only so if you wanted any of the other stitches for making garments and things like that or if you needed the free arm then this machine doesn't do that so it really does depend on what your needs are and if you're thinking of buying a sewing machine that's what you need to think of first before you think of what brand are you going to choose or what your budget is or anything like that really have a good think about what is it that you're going to use it for. A general all-purpose domestic sewing machine is great for all kinds of sewing. So I hope that this was useful. Let me know in the comments. Do you have either of these sewing machines or something similar? What are your thoughts about them? And if not, what sewing machine do you use and what do you like about it? And hopefully we can get a really nice discussion going in the comments and anyone who's thinking of buying a machine can go there and find out even more information and that will be really useful. So thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.